Hello, welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm marketing operations here at Smarty. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, this webinar is about the legalities of address data and we're really excited to get started and dive into this content. However, before we move forward and I introduce our presenters, a couple of housekeeping items. One, this webinar will be recorded. We'll get a copy of it sent out to everybody who registered. So we'll be checking your email inbox later today for that. You can also forward that on and send it to whoever you think would benefit from this. So uh, hopefully that's something that is useful for you. Uh, to interact with our presenters and other audience members, please do use the chat and the Q&A features of the Zoom webinar interface. This will make it so that we can answer exact questions that you have and be able to uh, help you get the most out of this presentation. All right, so speaking of our presenters, today we have John Marco Rossboro uh, and Davin Perkins with us, and we're very excited to hear what you have to sh share. I'll let Davin introduce John Marco a little bit more, and uh, without further ado, I will shut my mouth. Hi, hey, thank you. Uh, so for the last five years, John Marco uh, Rossboro has been Smarty's in-house legal counsel. Uh, we've invited him to discuss data protection laws and how it pertains to address data. Uh, he claims that he's not an expert, but John Marco has gotten exposure uh, to the topic of data privacy and the legalities of address data as we process trillions of addresses through our US and international uh, address APIs. So today, uh, John's going to be sharing with us uh, details about GDPR, CCPA, and the new U.S. data privacy laws and how they pertain to address data. Sure. And just want to put in my lawyer disclaimer that nothing I say should could be considered legal advice, but um, hopefully you'll have you'll get this will uh, give you some questions to think about, and uh, if you do your homework and uh, go to the source, you'll be able to find the answers that you need. So um, what do you want to know first? Yeah, well, thanks, uh, thanks first of all, for doing this webinar. I know that it's, uh, it's, it's quite a slog to go through all of this data privacy stuff, as we've learned. So we know that data privacy and security is an important topic. Um, so this year, California amended the California Consumer uh, Privacy Act and introduced the CPRA, uh, the Consumer Privacy Rights Act. Uh, and similarly, on January 1st, 2023, uh, Colorado, Utah, Virginia, Connecticut, all enacted their own privacy laws. And so a lot of businesses are unsure about how to best deal with the changing data privacy landscape. And so we hope to address that in our webinar today. So my first question for you is, what is the background of these privacy laws and, and why do we need so many variations? Yeah, so um, it, until recently, the U.S. Uh, has treated data privacy a bit casually. Um, we've always protected health information, financial information, um, educational information. But we kind of got a wake-up call, of course, back when uh, Edward Snowden revealed that um, our government was kind of collecting da data that they shouldn't have been and using it uh, and somewhat against us. If you think about if you're a political party that got targeted for an audit from the IRS or something like that. Anyway, the, Europe responded to that incident with passing uh, GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. Um, this was back in 2016, and, and then went into effect in 2018. And so you're probably familiar with that or have exposure to that if you've been in business since then. Uh, basically, the law introduced the concepts of personal data belonging to each consumer and that that consumer has rights pertaining to to their identity. US is still uh, behind in the game as far as um, defining the laws for the whole nation. US um, recently, President Biden did pledge to move uh, more quickly in that direction, but so far there's no federal le legislation. And so um, my states are left to fend for themselves. They're uh, building an airplane as mid-flight as they're trying to fly it yeah so it's just uh, california has taken the lead and uh they've you know trailblazed and a lot of the legislation uh other states have followed suit and um california's approach has been good uh it lacks some definition there's very little you know case law through the years but um the new amendment that you mentioned the cpra um is 
attempts to remedy that and get more clarity in defining uh, the laws. And so when it comes to these kind of laws, there's a lot of information about them. Uh, so along with this webinar at the end, we're going to be giving you a handout with links to all the resources that you're going to talk about. There's some really cool comparison tables. Um, but what are some of the similarities and differences between the states? Did everyone just copy and paste the California law? Were they just doing cheating off of California's homework? Some of them did, yeah. Okay. I mean, Virginia's laws are uh, very similar to California's, um, and, and they all pattern somewhat. They vary in their definitions and, and things that uh, how they approach it. And so it's important to get um, legal advice and, and meet with your attorney or professional to get the nuance of each particular state. It's, there, there are um, businesses out there and firms that have done their homework and have prepared, um, you know, little side by side comparisons and those uh, resources that you mentioned actually include all those side-by-side -side comparisons for each clause and how they handle it. So I think they're good. It's good information, but it's not something that we are going to cover it um, specifically in this webinar because there's, there's too many. So, so really it's just, there's too much that's similar. There's too much that's different. It's too much to cover in this webinar. So yeah, the doubles in the details. Yeah. It's just, and, and every business is unique, right? So yeah. Um, yeah. Talk to your lawyer. But I can get give you some general out generalities um, as to who's subject to these laws. It's not enough to say, hey, you know, I, my business is in this in California and therefore I'm subject to California laws. Yeah, you may be. But if you're doing business also in other states, Colorado, Utah, uh, Connecticut and uh, Virginia, you, you've got to be mindful of those states as well. You know, um, businesses that are affected are ones that meet a threshold of um, revenue to the amount of 25 million or, or above. Um, you've got to consider how much consumer data you're collecting and uh, it needs to be above a hundred thousand. And, uh, and then of course, um, if you're in the business of uh, selling data or sharing data, uh, broker companies, if you derive at least 50% of your income revenue doing those, um, that business, then you're, you'll be subject to these laws. Oh, okay. So basically what you're saying, if you're not doing over 25 million a year, if 50% of your revenue isn't coming from data sales, and if you don't have over a thousand people in, a, in say California, um, then you don't have to worry about these laws. Privacy isn't a concern for your business and you just get off scot-free, right? Right. No, not right. Um, and so it's not really about the sizes of meeting the threshold it is important, but there are other laws that have been protecting uh, consumers um, identity. Uh, you need to take into mind that uh, we've had the HIPAA compliance laws. Think about that. Uh, your medical records have been protected through that. Uh, your education, the FERPA, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, that that covers educational information. The, the FTC has been good at uh, going after companies with misleading information or deceptive advertising mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, there's COPA for um, children's uh, rights uh, as far as protecting information of children. Uh, COPA is children's online privacy protection. And then as we're seeing more and more states are having to um, legislate new laws and, and we're going to be seeing more acronyms out there, CPA and VCDPA and et cetera. So uh, yeah, you're not off scot-free. Okay. So those are all just protecting certain classes of data and certain audiences. And so CCPA isn't all there is to it. Um, we have to worry about a lot of things when it comes to privacy. Absolutely. Okay. So what about address data? Is it personal data or is it personal information? Uh, and how is that defined inside of these privacy laws? Sure. Um, so address data is considered personal information. Um, it's in different laws have slightly different definitions, but the inf if information identifies or relates to or could reasonably be linked to you or your household, that's considered personal data. Okay. And so, yeah, addresses are personal data. If there, there should be a, a chart, I don't know if that's being... Um, transmitted, but there's a little chart. Oh, here we go. Slide. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I can do this. That could, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, this kind of categorizes simply the different um, 
uh, areas with, where data may reside. It may be personal data or not, and then there's special categories. There's also special uh, enhanced uh, protection with special categories. Um, so, okay. yeah. So, so I see in here under personal data is home address. And so, um, yeah, uh, what else do we need to know about this? Uh, so what is, what is personal data as compared to, say, sensitive personal information? Yeah, so, yeah, you, you addressed it right. Sensitive personal identification uh, <laughs> information um, has to do with maybe social security numbers, um, passport numbers, your uh, race, ethnicity, uh, genetic information, and, and precise geolocation data. Um, address doesn't fall under being necessarily sensitive. Um, maybe it's moving towards that direction. If you're famous, if you're Taylor Swift and you don't want someone knocking on your door, yeah, address data is going to feel very sensitive. But generally, it's not. It's, it is part of your identity. Um, like, you know, you're Davin of 123 Main Street. Uh, I don't want you giving out my personal address during a webinar. Sorry, uh... <laughs> so. That's, that's part, of your, no. uh, uh, part of your identity. It tells I me who you, you are. you your address. <laughs> one, two, three, main. Oh, shoot. So now you move and now you're Davin of one, two, three, Electric Avenue or something. I told you. All right. Don't move. It's fine. But it's you fine. can't take your data with you. And so uh, if, if that address by itself does not, isn't linked, doesn't accompany a, a name, then you're, you're dealing with just a geo location, a, a point. Um, it's assumed that you know residents they give out this information so that they can receive their Amazon packages and such. But mm -hmm. maybe they don't really want you to, all the junk mail that's going to come with that. And so sure. the expectation is that hey, I gave you my address, but I didn't expect you to share it. And so um, you're in violation of my rights if you do. And so forth. There's a question in the back. Yeah, a question has come up about uh, addresses being associated. So, uh, is an anonymous address with a location point considered personal data as long as it doesn't contain, or, or if it doesn't con contain a person's name? Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. And if it doesn't contain personal name, and it's not sensitive. It just represents a location. Um, but the more uh, you can connect that information to a person, it starts to uh, go into the realm of being uh, protected, right? And so it is personal data. It's been defined as such. I don't think it should be, but it is uh, because of that identity. I, th I would think in Europe, Maybe they don't move around as much as we do here in the U.S. It's less of a effective, but less of a concern. But um, yeah, it is still a concern. It's becoming more of a concern where you live. And so I think the the question of the clarifying question then is an address by itself is not necessarily personal information. But if it's joined with another item, not even like a name, it could be something else. Yeah, that could identify a person. We're here to protect the consumer behind the, these data points. And so okay. remember, the purpose of the laws are to protect you. Um, and so, yeah, addresses alone wouldn't trigger a uh, heavy investigation. Although, you know, maybe if, if you let that address out and it causes damages or maybe, you know, I specifically told you not to share that. There are do not mail lists and things like that. And you didn't check against that. But I've. I've sought for actively um, made some conscientious efforts to protect my address and you've violated that. So it has to do with getting consent with how you use this information. Okay. And so because all that information is publicly available, I could go drive down the street and find out every address. I can sure. go and download um, public information from cities or counties that have address data. And as long as it's divorced from individual names. Uh, that's what the ambiguities is what makes it hard right here. This is where you, you should consult, you know, with your attorney as to how you're using the data that you're collecting. If you are driving down the street, yeah, that's publicly available. You're going to see, you know, three, two, one on the door, but, um, but how, how are you going to use it? Is it going to be, uh, what damages are you going to cause? I think you're going to get, um, 
a pushback if you're misusing the data that you're collecting. Okay. So let's go over some of the, the rights that consumers have and what yeah. obligations we as businesses have uh, in helping to protect that data so that we can right. limit our own liability. I think a lot of this topic has been covered if, if you've been um, reading up or involved in, in, in protecting consumers' data. Uh, there's the right of access, which gives you the right to f- be informed how a business is using your um, information and what they have on you. Um, you have a right to rectify and correct that information, you know, um, if it's wrong. And um, and then the laws, some of the laws are, say that you need to give two methods uh, of uh, correction to your um, consumers. If uh, not just say, hey, email us, but also provide a support number if they're not good at emailing or some way to, a second method to. So we can say, Send smoke signals to change your personal data or Morse code. Those are the two methods. And that's, yeah, that's, okay. that's uh, one of those dark practices you don't want to <laughs> be accused of doing. Um, the right, uh, the right to delete. You have a right to, in some capacities, you have a right to, you know, ask a, a business to delete all your information. And some may do it. Some industries may not. Um, if picture a bank industry are not going to, they're going to hesitate to remove all your information, but in general, they're going to remove it from uh, marketing and from other uses that they might be authorized or were authorized to use. Um, You have a right to opt out of certain processing sales or sharing your data. Um, And then right of portability. Again, I think we, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but um, you know, taking your records and saying, I have a right to go to another vendor or another business. And I want all my medical records to go to this doctor. And oh yeah. Like when you switch doctors, being able to move that over. Yeah. Okay. And then two more is just a, a right against the automated uh, decision-making. So think of when you're applying for a job or, um, or a college entrance. Uh, if you've missed one of, you know, answered it wrong, you don't want an AI computer to uh, eliminate your possibilities. You have a right to have a human interaction uh, to, to review your, um, your application. And then right to action. This is kind of a controversial thing, but uh, not all states allow this. But California now allows um, citizens and, and residents to seek civil damages if a business has uh, violated a statue or breach of security and not, not taking all the steps that they need to. So this is kind of a, you know, opens up the floodgates of litigation. Thank okay. you, California. But, uh, <laughs> and, and potential like class action lawsuits. Uh, so uh, yeah. It can, yeah. It can be a scary it's, thing for it a business. Can't be. Not all states, some states rely on attorney general to decide which ones are worth prosecuting or not. Um, but yeah, as far as obligations. Like these are obligations that businesses okay. have. Yep. Obligations. Okay. Uh, you want to, I'm not going to talk about opt-in age, but you know, if you're dealing with children, you want to make sure that you're um, you're treating children data, you know, in a special way. Um, you think about your privacy policy is notification, be transparent, have a purpose for collecting, and uh, share that purpose. Uh, don't retain that data longer than you need it, and um, and declare whether what you're going to do with it, whether you're going to share or not. Hey, we got a question in the back. Yeah, I'm curious about um, how much of this, because you mentioned at the beginning the GDPR stuff with Edward Scissorhands, <laughs> but I'm wondering how many of this came about with the the, the launch of like Facebook. That and too. MySpace, because I remember, you know, it's a big deal that you have to be, what is it now, 13 to have a Facebook account, uh-huh. or at least you have to say you're 13. Say, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's now like Facebook it. is or isn't liable for that information. If they Sure, they've gotten a pass uh, because this is all new territory and this is a treasure trove for data miners. Sure. Right. There's so much information that we freely share out there. Right. Um, but um, again, there's this concept of just because I posted, is it really free to use? And, and, and uh, we need some protection. And, right. uh, and, and I guess you might not right. want to say, well, Facebook did it and it worked out because 
they spent some time in court, I believe. <laughs> I don't know. That, yeah, I'm sure they've been to court. I know they Zuckerberg appeared before the congressional hearings and things, but uh, we're not there. You're not seeing federal legislation yet. I think that they're still uh, holding back and seeing what works with the states. Uh, it's, it's a slow process, um, but hopefully what comes out will be something better than GDPR and something better than CCPA. Um, but time will tell. This is no, this is uncharted territories. So yeah, be careful. Don't let your children say they're, oh, I, I'm guilty of this. <laughs> yeah. Say they're not the real age. I don't really want to give the actual age of my children online. So I tell them just fake your age and, but that's probably not good advice. Says so the, if says you have any of John Marco's <laughs> children's ages in any of your data sets, just know that they're wrong. So just delete them or find more Even accurate information. Own, like I, I feel like I saw something about that. that said, I really want to express to my children the importance of being honest, but I also want to stop my poor <laughs> lie in public. I know she's twelve when we need to get a kid's name. <laughs> you know, like exactly right. Yeah, so just I, boot the Ross Bros from any, any services they're using online. Facebook. They're breaking the rules. Funny because everyone congratulates you on your birthday. And then I have my brother who faked his address. And on January 1st, everyone congratulates him on his birthday. And it's really in April, but I, no, I shouldn't say. But anyway. It, yeah, what day in April nothing, is not? None of my business. Okay. What's his, What's his full name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it rhymes with... <laughs> Okay, so one thing you okay. mentioned earlier was dark patterns when I was talking about using smoke signals in Morse code uh, in order to request changes in data. What, what is a dark pattern? Oh, uh, gosh. Uh, dark pattern is just making it hard for consumers to exercise their rights. Uh, and it, it's easy to sign up for the goods and services that you want online. And then if you want to remove my address, remove my information, oh, I've got to click through this and go to that page. That's a dark practice that you want to avoid. And there the, some of the laws do address that. Um, and it has to do with, you know, giving consent and we're removing consent. And if someone has removed consent, I think it's the C, um, it's California's law that says you have to wait 12 months before you can ask them to opt back in. Like you need to give them a 12 month rest period for, from collecting their data and say, hey, hammer you, them again. Yeah, hammer again. Hey, are you sure you want to opt out? Because wouldn't you want some service that, Hopefully you're not discriminating, right? So you're not saying that that they can't um, they can't uh, have your services just because they exercise their right. That's that's covered in a lot of the laws. Yeah, and a lot of uh, of these things we're talking about are going to be covered in in the handout and some of the information we're. Yeah, we can move forward. So, uh, so circling back to address data, now we talked about businesses sure. and individuals. Um, how do these laws affect Smarty? Like, what are you dealing with day to day? Uh, how are we addressing privacy on our end? Okay. Well, we talked about whether, you know, address data is really sensitive or not. Um, we we try to minimize uh, our collection. In fact, um, we ask our clients not to send us names when they want us to process their address data. Um, keep it to a bare minimum. Addresses consist of, those, of these deliverable points and location, uh, both for businesses and residential areas. And that's what we do best is we're able to give a clarity. Every address that comes in, we can return an answer saying, this is a residential, this is consumer, or, uh, a business, um, a commercial location. Um, if by accident you download names, um, our system doesn't read and de-identify, de just you know, eliminates um, that information and just processes the, the data part. Um, there's obviously names in the string of data, you know, one, two, three, MacArthur Street. That name will not be deleted because it doesn't. doesn't so it's identified as a person. part of an address, but if right. there's another field that says user right. name, phone number, social security, we're not reading into any of that. Yeah. Um, the other thing, um, I don't know if we mentioned it, but um, it is publicly available information. Like you said, you can go and get. Um, go to your public records and look up addresses and even get names and, and such. Um, there are exclusions in the laws dealing with, um, uh, well, the, the exclude having um, government, get, obtaining your information from government sources. Um, it's, it's out there. And so 
uh, you'll have to look specifically to the laws. I missed my, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Where are we? I, we had to, I lost my place in my notes oh, where we are, but here we are. Okay, just did that one. Yeah, did we talk about rights? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. we did. Rights yeah. aren't important. Yeah, no, just no, we're talking about Smarty. <laughs> <laughs> we're just okay. talking so about we, the exclusions. We de-identify uh, the we de-identify. data. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we anonymize it. Um, yeah. And, okay, here's a, another point. Um, we are licensee of the United States Postal Service. We obtain all our all these records through through their da- database. They're authorized vendors, and um, you know we won't share that information with third parties entities. But um, we hope to be covered. If they're covered, we're covered. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're not going to give that information out. If you want to validate an address against our data sets, we'll tell you if it's a real address. Yeah, we do but- have a U.S. master address list. That comes to mind. And and this is where um, each client is going to have to do their own homework on. We, we provide a U.S. master address list or rooftop geocoding. Uh, it's up to you to um, determine with your attorney the proper use of, of these products. Um, there, I've mentioned that there's a national database of do not mail list. So if you use our product to mail out um, marketing, you know, direct mailings, uh, you need to check against uh, these available databases. Yeah. Um, we don't do that for yeah. you. We don't have names. We don't. We can't possibly do that. So we can give you those addresses, but then you have to take that information and be responsible with it and make sure that you're following the laws. Yeah, I, I'm not giving specific advice, but based in general, if you have a legitimate purpose, business purpose for how you're using the information and your consumers know about it, you shouldn't run into trouble. That said, okay. that's not, you know, ask well, your attorney, but- um, you've gotten the consent, you've done your homework, you're protecting the data, and you're being authorized to use the, the information. You're Great. Getting. Would this be a good time to talk about enhanced data privacy and what that means? Well, maybe. Um, yeah. For clients that have data and they're hypersensitive or just want to heighten security of that data, we offer a feature in our, our um, product that uh, allows uh, customers to send their data for cleansing and uh, verification and standardization, and and it's all processed on RAM memory. And so the moment that they send the next uh, batch or the next uh, address to be cleansed, all the previous that is is eliminated, it's sponged, overwritten. overwritten. Yeah, I'm not the tech guy to really talk about that, but yeah, it's just so there's nothing there. We don't retain that log. Just we know a quantity that of the addresses we've had to process for our mm-hmm. clients and charge them accordingly. And uh, also in the handout, we're going to be, there's an article included there that talks about uh, personal identifiable information in Smarty, uh, an article on our site that talks about enhanced data privacy. It talks about how we redact customer data, uh, and you can follow that for, check that out for additional guidelines. So something we haven't talked about in this webinar is what happens if I'm like, I don't really care. Data compliance, privacy stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to ignore it. What's We're going to happen to me? I'm willing to take my risks. <laughs> I'm willing take to take risk, my risks. Yeah. Which a, a lot of people flying under the radar. Uh, uh, but yeah, there are consequences and the new amendment makes those uh, even harsher. Uh, we haven't talked about the penalties. Um, California, I think, has anywhere from $2,500 to $7,500 per incident per violation per violation yeah so, so if a violations found on a thousand customer records yeah and if it's really likely. egregious it's going to be in the upper tier um we haven't talked about data security measures but it's really important my advice is to meet with your it professionals and make sure that uh your privacy policy uh reflects what you're actually doing and you know, sometimes privacy policies look nice on paper but then in actuality um, that's not what, if you're not doing those things, that's where you can get into hot trouble. And then also, um, California has eliminated, uh, the opportunity to, to cure. They used to give you 30 days. If there was a violation, the attorney general would reach out to you and, and slap your hand and say, Hey, this is where you're deficient or where you've gone wrong. You got 30 days to comply. That's going away. Some, some States, I think still afford that right to cure, but um, that's going away. So it's just straight to the guillotine if they find that you're guilty. 
I don't maybe, think it's maybe the fight not, that. But. Yeah, there's going to be investigation again. Every every violation has is going to be measured in different weight, and that's going to be up to the courts to decide. I'm sure, and uh-huh. and that's going to be interesting to see how. And a lot of this hasn't been tested, so it's like nobody really knows what's going to happen here. Yeah, and some jurisdiction is going, they're going to have to have or you know put a hefty fine on someone, and somewhere else is going to be a slap on the wrist and. The consistency. This is why federal law would be very useful. All right. Well, can you give us some tips? Um, yeah, we're at the end here now. Uh, in order, uh, to- I ne- I I prepared five basic tips, um, and there's sure uh, you're sure to find more. But basically, map out your data, know what personal information that you're collecting, and and where you keep it, and update your privacy policy. Number two, meet with your uh, data security team. Uh, respond to security incidents, have a security incident policy um, and be responsive to it because that one has has had some cases and hefty fines um, have been dealt out. Um, minimize the data. Do you really need to collect all the information that you've gotten? Uh, do you have a retention policy? Make sure that um, you don't keep that data indefinitely. And um, number four, invest in Cybersecurity and cyber uh, cyber insurance. Um, I know insurances are getting more and more expensive as they're finding just exactly um, what it takes to protect businesses. And so, yeah, our insurance went up and I'm sure everyone else's has been too. You want to hire third-party auditors um, and test your... Uh, Test all your um, what your like your internal systems, yeah, your internal procedures and systems, and how you're doing things, and uh, and then finally, I can't say it's stress enough to have your own attorney or professional go over uh, what you're doing and and understand the definitions um, of just simple words like what does it mean to share as opposed to selling information, releasing the information, disseminating, transferring, communicating it to someone else. Each one has different nuances, exactly what you're doing um, in your behavior. So, um, so this is all just a sales pitch to get people to hire an attorney. Uh, Can somebody pay you directly through Venmo? Uh, I have a, yeah, Venmo account. If you have any questions. John Marco, the Italian (laughs) sound at Venmo. Okay. Yeah, that's send money there yeah. first, and then John Mark will take money care of first. All problem. Tainer first, then we'll talk. Uh, no, uh, yeah. Seek out your own friendly neighborhood. I attorney. just looked up the Italian stallion. It does not look like you. Oh come on! Do I kind of look like the Italian stallion? I'm Italian. Okay. Do I don't know. Are there any questions? How did we do on time? Uh, we only went five minutes over, which is really good for an attorney, right? Yeah, I tend to be long. Oh, yeah. So I should have just slowed way down. <laughs> well, the the original question and it answers was about three times as long as it was. So I that's true. We're lucky we got out in under ninety minutes. That's true. I, that's true. I think I breezed through some of that stuff, but you've got yeah. That's notes. that's that's what the handouts for, right? Um, yeah, that's what it's for. That's right. So. Um, we will get that handout out to you guys uh, in the email within a couple of hours. I'll try to get that put together. If you guys don't already have a free Smarty account, you can get one at smarty.com. And then there's a little free account button in the top right corner. Uh, you can try out our address validation services that have uh, all been approved by John Marco. Uh, I did. <laughs> Let me look at that again before you send it out. But yes, uh, you didn't say like, Click here, subscribe, like our oh, that's right. page. Or, no, that's the... Smash the subscribe button. Smash that oh, don't, subscribe don't that. button. But John Marco, thank you. All that. thank you for jumping on this webinar and doing this with us. I think right. it's, a, it's an ugly topic that a lot of people are just pretending like isn't um, a thing. You can't it's bury your head in the sand. Yeah. But, so yeah. at least good to give people a, a starting point for what direction to move in. It's a starting point. That's right. Cool. Great. Thank you, John Marco. Thank you, Davin. And thanks everybody for jumping on this uh, webinar and hopefully learning a thing or two about legalities. And big thank you to Brady uh, for, for, for visiting. All right. We'll see you guys next time.